What's the difference between a health drill, a rehab drill, and a performance-based drill? That's what we're gonna to answer today. All right, guys. Today I wanna to talk a little bit about my top four shoulder health slash mobility drills and what they're gonna do for you. I'm a very big believer that health and rehabilitation as well as performance training are all on the same spectrum. It's a bit of a sliding scale, if you will. Me doing something like a very basic shoulder external rotation drill as well as say maybe something like a weighted shoulder dislocation are gonna be at their core, the same movement, just performed at very different intensity. Rather than what the specific drill is, I find it's a lot more important to match the intensity to where that client is at at that time. If my shoulder's been feeling great recently, that doesn't necessarily mean that I don't perform any work on them. It means that I basically would scale the intensity from a lighter to something maybe more intense where I'm trying to push that envelope a little further and get a little more out of it. Conversely, if my shoulder's been feeling quite beat up, whether it be from a big block of training, maybe I'm harboring a few niggles or something like that, I'm gonna scale right back. I'm gonna basically build from a bit of a bottom up approach where I'm gonna try and really dilute back down to the core of the movement I'm trying to train at the joint and start very sort of, yeah, ground up. With this approach, it allows me to basically scale back to the bare bones of what I'm trying to get out of that joint what it needs to be able to do, and then suitably challenge it with an intensity that matches where it's at at that time. All right, drill number one. In daily life, we find ourselves sitting in these really protracted positions a lot of the time. Over time, you imagine that that joint space starts to get used to that position and essentially adapts to it, whether we want it to or not. By being able to free up those scaps and sort of allow them to retract a little better, we're opening up our mobility. If you imagine point A to point B here, point A being a fully retracted scap as far as I can, point B being fully protracted. If I kind of have my middle point, not so much sitting here, but sitting further towards this protracted range because I'm spending so much time there, the amount you have between this midpoint that you find as your neutral and the end point here is mirrored on the other side. So I'm essentially losing my ability to fully retract, but also to fully protract because I'm cutting down on both sides there. To help free this up, we need to train both retraction, as you'd expect from being in a very protracted position, but also protraction, because often the adaptation that we get from long times in those positions is more of a stiffness in those tissues and they adapt to being short, but they feel very tight. We wanna basically allow them to reset to a more of a neutral position, but also being strong and having great control. Drill two, depression and elevation. Again, nothing groundbreaking by any stretch of the imagination. These are all scaled back concepts to basically what we want out of that scapular shoulder. By training our ability to both depress and elevate our scaps, we're basically maximizing the capacity we have for strength and control through their range. Drill three, internal and external rotation. Often thought of as a bit of the boogeyman in the like, very rarely do I see shoulder internal rotation trained very well. It can be a bit of a precautious position if you've had numerous shoulder injuries and never really built up, but provided you scale correctly, absolutely essential to train and you're doing yourself a major disservice by not training it. External rotation definitely gets a lot more attention than its internal rotation counterpart, but they're two sides of the same coin. So to train one, you'd be silly enough to train the other at the same time. So both in mutual parts, a bit of yin and yang there. And drill four, a dislocation of the shoulder. Whilst this drill has very sort of mixed approaches, very big in weightlifting scenes and the like due to its ability to get those shoulders sort of really open and loose, through that extension there. Also can be thought of quite negatively through a lot of veins of people thinking it's gonna cause instability and cause my shoulders to dislocate and the like. What you're essentially trying to train here is your ability to get to that position safely with stability whilst improving that mobility. So it's kind of a three-headed approach there that you are training the ability to control that joint space while you're entering it. So in turn, you're effectively trying to prevent a shoulder dislocation, which sounds counterintuitive to what the name of the exercise is, but you're trying to get that position trained. You imagine if I'm entering these extreme ranges and someone sort of forces my arm back here, but my shoulders never really experienced that, it's gonna have a lot less ability to contract, lock down and stabilize versus if I've trained that position and that range there. All right, enough talk, let's get into it. All right, so first up, we've got some scap retraction here. So I'm gonna be doing a banded version. Attach your band to the rack or sort of whatever you're using to anchor here. And the main sort of cues I'm trying to think of here are keeping my arm nice and long and not really emphasizing any sort of pulling or rowing. I'm trying to only think about pulling from my scap and controlling from my scap here. So you imagine if I'm sort of looping my hands inside here, one little tip I like is to almost essentially give myself handcuffs. What that allows me to do is free up my hands so I'm not grabbing and sort of pulling on the band and basically dissociate those hands from the movement so I'm less inclined to pull. 
Again, if you've got good control of those scaps, it shouldn't make too much of a difference either way. But it is one nice little sort of technique to, to give beginners when they are struggling with that sort of concept of controlling from the scaps rather than rowing it in there. So what it should look like is if you sort of take a behind approach here, got my hands looped in and I'm squeezing and pulling those shoulder blades back together. So my arms are basically staying in this one horizontal plane here the whole time. I'm going back and forth, back and forth, squeezing and stretching. So I'm letting it pull me forward and get this big protraction stretch here. And I'm retracting all the way back, squeezing them together, with finishing with a bit of an isometric contraction there. So I'm continually trying to squeeze them harder and harder together, even once I've maxed out my range there. Letting it pull and stretch me forward, trying to almost emphasize going with the band more than I'm able to, and then pulling and squeezing back. And this is a good one that you can load quite lightly as a great warm up, or load a little more intensely if you're trying to focus on a bit more of the strength side of the spectrum there. Part two of drill one, we've got some protraction. So this is essentially where we're going to be opposing the motion we just did there. So rather than sort of pulling towards ourselves and trying to squeeze the space between those shoulder blades shut, now we're going to be doing the opposite. We're going to be pushing away. We're trying to get them as round away from the back of our spine as we can. So we're trying to almost get into that punch position. So one drill I'm a big fan of for this is basically a push-up protraction or a protraction push-up, depending on how you want to look at it. So essentially it's going to be setting up in a very regular push-up position, but the one key difference is that we're just pushing from those scapulas. So we're gonna have them glide and slide back and forth over that rib cage without really any bend in the elbow. So what it should look like is something to this effect, where I'm coming into a nice normal push-up position, nice and hollowed out, letting myself sink and those shoulder blades touch, pushing away and spreading. Sink and touch, push away and spread. So if I was not doing this very correctly, I might have too much of a bend here where I'm still bending those elbows, even if it's not a massive amount to a normal push-up effect. It's pretty much just going to be that upper back where it lets my chest sink through, push up. Sink through, push up. A good way I like to term it and sort of give the analogy of my arms being support pillars where they can't bend, they can't move. They're pretty much just allowing my chest to sink up and down through that position. This may be a movement you find a touch easier than something like a banded retraction behind me there. So one good way to make this a little tougher by getting a band, looping it through my hands, and then behind myself, trying to find that nice mid scapula line there. And then essentially the exact same motion carries over. But now I have a bit of a band resistance as well. So the band is trying to pull me in and down here and I'm trying to push up and away. Pull me down, up and away. And basically repeating that, but now I have the added resistance of the band there. A thin band goes quite a long way in regards to a banded push up protraction like that. Drill number two scapular elevation and depression. So with depression, one of the biggest sort of keys I like to teach a scapular depression is using a pull up as a sort of a mimicking motion. So what a scapular pull up is, is essentially the exact same as a uh, protraction push up there, where we're just using our shoulder blades and scapula to take us through the range. So I'm not really breaking at the arms, it's just a slight little pull up and down with my shoulder blades. So from a front on position, it looks something like this. I set myself in a nice sort of neutral Wide grip, nothing too over-exaggerated out here, nothing too narrow, so just maybe a little bit wider than shoulder width, depending on what you find comfortable. Allow yourself to hang, and all I'm thinking about doing is pulling those shoulder blades down. So again, as you can see, it's not a very big motion. Just a small little pull there. But you can see that my arms aren't breaking, but I'm still moving up and down there. Versus if I was to try and pull a little too much, it might be something to this effect, where my shoulder blades are moving minimally, my elbow is actually bending more than my shoulder blades have been moving. Uh, behind perspective, it'll look something like this. Nice full hang, full stretch, shoulder blades down. Full hang, down. And basically, repeating through that position there. That is a scapular pull up. Next up, scapular elevation. This is probably one of the much more commonly trained movements in a gym as a shoulder drill, but more of an upper trap drill. So this can be done with dumbbells and shrugs or anything to that effect. I like to use a band just because at my sort of weakest position at the top here, the band's going to be its toughest. So it kind of, it's almost an inverse scaling effect there with difficulty. So what I can do is I can stand on the band like that. I let myself to get nice and tall, have it pull me down in this big stretch here. And think about slight forward lean. As you can see there, I'm not standing straight up. I'm not real hunched over like I'm doing a dumbbell row or anything like that maybe a five, 10 degree angle there. And I'm thinking about pulling my shoulder blades up behind my ears. So chin stays sort of neutrally tucked here, shoulder blades up and back.
nice and simple. Drill three, shoulder internal and external rotation. Much more commonly trained of these two is shoulder external rotation, so we'll touch on that first. So one of my sort of favorite shoulder external rotation drills is gonna be a sort of elbow assisted shoulder rotation. So it allows you to set the sort of parameter of where you need to be moving without any sort of assistance or cheating really. So you need a bench, a dumbbell. What you do is you set your leg up nice and tall. So the idea is that I want this to be roughly about sort of chest to shoulder height, somewhere in that vein there. What I'm then doing is grabbing the dumbbell, setting my elbow so it's gonna be on the inside of my knee. So you imagine it's essentially that sort of height there. So I'm set on that on the inside, leaning my chest forward so my chest is staying over my hips here. I'm letting that elbow rotate in while keeping the elbow nice and high. And then rotating back up and stacking myself over. Control down, that shoulder's gonna internally rotate on the way down, might be a big stretch. Again, you'll be limited by how mobile your shoulders are here. You may only get sort of two thirds of the way down, you may get all the way down, depending on where you're starting from. Everyone's gonna be a different spot, scale accordingly. Internal rotation, scale back up to external. So as I'm coming up here, my elbow is not really climbing onto the top of my knee at any point. I'm basically just using that as a guide to help me keep that elbow still in space. Versus if I was trying to do it here, that elbow naturally is going to sort of come around and move a fair bit more. Shoulder external rotation, done. Next up, we're going to do some internal rotation here. So how I like to train this, you're going to be generally a lot weaker doing a motion like this versus an external there. Your external rotators are generally going to be a fair bit stronger. So, how I like to do the internal rotation component, coming face down on a bench here, grabbing a dumbbell, I'd say, a good guy is something 50%-ish of what you just did on the external there. And what I'm gonna be doing is keep my arm nice and long here, thinking about a bit of a tricep kickback style position, but what I'm focusing on is starting with a nice long arm and trying to always crank that shoulder as far as I can forward. So what it would look like from here, crank it and roll forward. Okay, come down, crank and roll. Crank and roll. So as I get to this top position, Ideally, I'm feeling it on the front of my shoulder, sort of anywhere in this effect here. If it's just all tricep, play with the weight. Maybe you might need to go a little bit heavier, a little bit lighter, but it should be a good burn on the front of that shoulder as well if you're truly rotating. If I'm just thinking about sort of kicking back in that direction with everything versus clock, uh, my arm as a clock arm, where I'm sort of rotating from that shoulder point is the control that may change the emphasis of what you're feeling there. Rule number four, shoulder dislocations. So, with this drill here, it's gonna be very individual in terms of where your starting point is. I like to use a broomstick. You can use any sort of long wooden dowel-esque item, doesn't matter too much. The worse your shoulder mobility, the wider you'll need to start. So if you can imagine that this here, as it's only limited to this sort of length, this may not be appropriate for all beginners. This is, I'm pretty sure, a standard 1.35, so it's about five foot. You may need to start at six, maybe a little bit wider. You imagine the wider my hands are, the less range my shoulder will be coming through when I'm performing a dislocation. Versus the narrower they are, the more range that shoulder has to be able to be taken through. So what they're gonna look like is, due to some awesome footage corruption, I'm refilming their shoulder external rotations with a large amount of noise in the background, which is always great when you're filming. So touching back to what I was talking about there, I'm going to have those arms nice and long, come around from that front position, stretch, reach all the way back, touch on that lower back there. Basically rolling between those two points. You want to imagine that I'm always trying to take as wide of an arc as I can here and have those arms stay long and keep that stick almost away from me as much as I can the whole way. If your mobility is quite good, you'll find you'll probably progress through this pretty quickly. Like even just something like that may not be very challenging initially and may feel like a very minor stretch, but not really like you're challenging or trying to adapt to anything there. So what you can do at that stage is adding weight. So grabbing something like a 2.5 kilo plate here, and now exactly the same as I was doing before. Coming around, touch it back, come back around. So the main sort of positions you'll feel the difference will be. So this along here doesn't really feel like much. It feels like quite a, almost a lateral slash front raise. But as I get to this position here, that stretch on my pec and sort of bicep tissue is increased quite a large amount. Back over. Again, if that's still not quite challenging enough, you can start to progress. Increments of sort of like 1.25 or 2.5 are generally be quite good. Like if you jump from nothing to 10, you're probably gonna lose an arm. It's not gonna feel very good, and you're probably gonna end up just bailing on the stick behind you. 
So start small, it's always better to start small and scale up more strategically there. We put a second 3.5 on there, and around that sort of five kilo mark is generally what will probably start to feel a little bit more challenging, but still feels like a good amount of progression between those two. So again, back and forward, and this is really gonna help get those pecs nice and lengthened, but also adapted to creating stability force for the shoulder whilst in this really far reaching back position there. All right guys, thank you for following along today. Hopefully you might've picked up a new drill or exercise, learned something new, or maybe even reframed how you train the sort of shoulder scapular complex as a whole there. Be sure to subscribe down below, throw to this video a like, let me know what you wanna see in the next rehab slash performance based video like this, whether it be spine, hips, ankles and knees, any of the above, let me know and I'll kind of come in your way. Keep it real and keep training.